If you've been watching for a while, you likely know I'm very pro Belle Delphine. I know some people hate her for the bathwater stuff, and others find her trolling ways on adult websites very frustrating. For me, I see her as an opportunist who is simply capitalizing on a market not many people, or any for that matter, have tapped into. In other words, yes, I'm sipping for Belle. Now, you guys are probably wondering how Belle Delphine started her career in the first place, how she was able to create this empire she is the queen of, and even how much she's been able to make over the last few years. Well, I got you. I'm gonna tell you guys about her wild life and the fun things she's done, but I need you guys to do something in return. Tag Belle on Twitter so she can notice me, and also like this video. Perfect, let's get into it then, guys. Belle first started growing on social media in 2015 when she would post pictures of herself modeling in what she referred to as a weird aesthetic, her now signature pink wigs and cat ears. She saw it as a place to be free, creative, and just have fun. At just 14, she dropped out of school and started using Facebook as her main outlet for creativity. She felt that the internet was where she felt most at home or comfortable. Now 21, she recently explained to Unilad that she had no intention of doing more adult-themed content. And then she posted a photo doing Aigeo. That's even how you would put it into a sentence? Is it like doing it? Is that even how you say it? Let's hope I'm right, guys. And that seems to be where everything changed. For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, it's the photo of Belle looking cross-eyed with her tongue out. It's like... I don't know if I even did it, we'll see. She claims after the photo went viral, people she looked up to online and those she idolized started to reach out to her. She explained to Unilad, I quote, this really was the start of everything. That one Ahigeo photo. I think it's like that for a lot of people. The right picture at the right moment. It was so surreal watching life change so quickly in front of my eyes. It feels like you're being pulled forward and you have to either rise to the occasion and jump on the train or you don't. In just a few months time, she would grow her following on Instagram to surpass the 1 million follower mark. But she realized she needed to be different to stand out, so she started doing some pretty weird stuff. I quote her saying, I was doing things that I thought were contrasting. Of course, I'm not the first to do any of these things. I do take a lot of reference from YouTubers such as Filthy Frank, etc. But to me, the real stunts were to just do things that weren't expected. Being unexpected on the internet is a good way to create dialogue. If you're looking to be a big personality online, you really have to follow the trends. But find something inside of that which you really enjoy. Of course, there are people doing a lot of really unique stuff that became successful, but honestly, the internet really is a living, evolving organism. It's moving so fast, you really have to be plugged in it to keep up. It's not an easy thing. Belle enjoyed producing content and over time was branded as the gamer girl or an e-girl. She also realized the opportunity that fell into her lap and the amount of money she could potentially make, so she decided to launch a Patreon account where fans could pledge money to see more of Belle, if you get what I'm saying. However, she didn't show it all, and many of her fans asked when she would. Then in 2019, she went mega viral for a couple reasons, making a parody account on an adult website and telling Bathwater, which actually started out as a joke. Taking her Instagram, Belle posted a photo claiming if she reached 1 million likes, she'd make an account on a very famous website, known as The Hub for short. When the photo reached the milestone, she created an account and uploaded numerous videos with scandalous titles, which I can't even say on YouTube. But let's just say her video titled Belle Delphine Strokes Two Big Chickens, although she used another word, showed her doing exactly that playing with real life chickens. To no surprise, people were disappointed while others got a good laugh from it all. In regards to the bathwater, when the idea first came up between her and her friends, they laughed about it before realizing it could actually sell. And boy, did her bathwater sell. Priced at 30 bucks per jar, within days the product would be sold out. Apparently there are a lot of people out there who are into other people's bathwater. I don't know, who would have thought guys? I don't know, it's a weird time we're living in. From that point on, Belle knew she had a big enough following and could seriously monetize it more so than she already had. At one point, she was posting almost every day on a Patreon and was making 200,000 a month. Wow. However, she eventually felt burnt out and decided to step away from the internet for a year's time. Given how much money she made, she really didn't need to return, but after her hiatus, she came back with a YouTube music video titled I'm Back, which would not only promote her OnlyFans, but was also a bop that would reach 36 million views. All right, it wasn't that good of a song, but it was funny. Within a week's time, she had tens of thousands of subscribers on OnlyFans willing to pay a fee to see some of Belle's uncensored content. And let me tell you guys, it was worth it. I'm kidding, that was a joke, I didn't check it out. But enough people have allowing Belle to make a comfortable million per month since joining the website. That being said, it seems not all platforms are on board with Delphine, as she's been banned on Instagram and on YouTube numerous times. She explains the reasons for her ban were likely due to each platform's guidelines, which is pretty much up to their discretion to enforce. Belle would get her YouTube reinstated, but given that she only has two videos on the platform now, I doubt she relies on it much. That being said, as she explained, some other creators put up much more risque content and don't get punished, but with the amount of online support she received following her YouTube ban, she thinks they caved to the pressure. And after years of teasing, Belle finally announced that on Christmas Day, she'll be releasing a homemade adult video on her OnlyFans page. She first announced the news on the Happy Hour podcast and has since posted her own YouTube video about it. The video will star her and her unidentified partner of three years, and she wanted to say, I quote, 
I like posting content that's pushing the limit. It's something I get off to as well. This makes the transition a little easier, but honestly, now let me just say guys, I can't say a certain word, so I'm gonna replace it with corn, and we're just gonna enjoy it. You guys ready? This is now back to Bell's quote. Shooting corn is unlike what I've ever done before. It's crazy having, gotta change another word here, the sexy time, and enjoying something and also filming it specifically for people to watch. Christmas is going to be the weirdest Christmas I think I will ever have opening presents and eating dinner while launching my corn for the first time. It's a big step, so there will definitely be some anxiety. Well, I wish Belle and her partner a very Merry Christmas and best of luck with their debut film. Good on her for building the empire she has and love her or hate her, you gotta respect the hustle. As always folks, let me know your thoughts on this one down below. How do you feel about Belle Delphine and everything that she's done over the years? For now, let's reply to some comments from the video. Ex head of space program reveals existence of alien galactic federation. Ezekiel Lee said, if people really think we're the only ones in this universe, is just wow. I, I mean, I'm a kind of person where like, I need proof. <laughs> I need to see it to believe it. So that's all I'm gonna say. I think it's possible there's other things out there, but like, let's say there's like a space tiger living on Mars. Are we gonna consider that an alien or is that an animal? How do we determine, I guess an alien's anything from like, that doesn't belong on the world, that's from, you know. But the point I'm making is like, we think aliens are like these like big green things with like long fingers and stuff. But what if we find like an animal of sorts? I guess that's still an alien, right? But it's not an intelligent species? Like how do we determine what, where do we draw that line? Doof said, memes aside, this is either amazing or dangerous for us. I think it's amazing. I think it's great. If we're, if there are another, another species out there, Opens the world of opportunities, folks. Sean Thompson said, worst case scenario, the aliens come to Earth and start a Karen breeding program. Well, you know what? I'm from Toronto, Toronto, Ontario. I'm willing to say worst case Ontario. So I'll leave you guys with that one. But yeah, Karen suck. Anyways, guys, that's it for this one. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein, and we'll see you soon.